pretty epic. Right, so this is effectively the official start line for this 25 and a half kilometre trail half marathon. And uh, there's nothing left to do but to do it. Got some music, got my supplies. I'm gonna start my watch. All right. Let's do this. What have I got myself in for? <laughs> hey guys, it's me. It's been a minute since I put a chat. Jeez, put a channel on this video. Yeah, it's been a minute since I made a video um, on this channel, as proven by my. Uh, inability to um, introduce a video. But this video is going to be interesting. It's going to be uh, fun. Well, it's fun to think about, not so fun to do when you're in the thick of it. But today I am indeed going to do my very best to qualify for next year's West Max Monster Ultra Marathon. This year came and went. The race that is. Uh, we've still got pretty much half of the year to go. The first half has gone relatively quickly, but that's only because I've been busy. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens, guys. Either way, I don't want to say too much. I've got to get out there. I've got to get to the start line. What we have here, folks, is my itinerary. No, not my itinerary, my inventory. Jesus Christ, I need some work. Um, my inventory for my run this morning. It is 25 kilometers from Simpsons Gap all the way along the Larapinta Trail to the Telegraph Station here in Alice Springs. So it's 25.5 k's, I think, and it's a specific 25.5 k's because last time I did this, I actually went from Alice Springs to Simpsons Gap, which is the wrong way. Um, I knew that that was the case, but what I didn't know is that there's a reason why you go from Simpsons Gap into Alice Springs, and that's because the... the the, um, the overall uh, elevation, or the overall sort of, um, what's the word? It's easier going from Simpsons Gap to Alice Springs because overall it's, a, it's more of a descent into Alice Springs than it is going the other way. I didn't know that. Um, I was able to get just under four hours going the other way. Uh, this time I will be going the right way. I'm hoping for at least under four hours because four hours is the qualifying time. This 25 kilometer stretch qualifies you for the 65 kilometer ultra marathon. Um, and if you want to qualify for the 128k, uh, then you go and, and complete the 65k um, section. And I think the cutoff might be 12 hours or something like that. I'm certainly not at that level. Uh, as far as training is concerned, very, very intermittent. Um, I am 10, well, I'm 11 days sober from alcohol at the moment. Alcohol has been, uh, unfortunately, it's been, um, it's been my undoing the last couple of years. You know what I mean? I just liked it too much and I prioritized it over a hell of a lot of other things. I uh, spent too much money on it. Uh, my physical health suffered, mental health suffered. Uh, everything suffered, you know? And that's what happens when you drink that much alcohol for that long, every single day. But today I am 11 days sober, and that is half the reason why I actually feel capable enough to do this. If I can complete this four, this uh, 25 and a half kilometer half marathon, effectively, along the trail, along the Larapinta Trail, if I can complete that in anything like three and a half hours today, with fuck all training, relying on mindset pretty much only and a base level of fitness, then I will be extremely happy. And um, I will have indeed qualified for the for next year's 65 kilometer um, Westmax Monster Ultra Marathon. So let me, with the power of YouTube, uh, click my fingers and well, I'll see you when we're about to leave the house. All right, guys, we're almost ready to go. Um, what I've got here is my camelback. Some of you may recognize that. 
Um, I thought, yes, I, I assumed it would get a hell of a lot more use uh, than it has, but I've kept it for a reason. Uh, I've got two bottles of Powerade in the back of it. I've got two bladders of water either side. I've got my GoPro to take videos whilst I'm running. And that's pretty much it. So uh, the next thing I want to show you is my new set of wheels. Have a look at this beauty. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, it's officially my very first motorbike. I've had plenty of scooters in the past. 50cc, 100cc, 125cc, but I've never actually had an actual motorbike. And uh, I bought that yesterday. Uh, it was about time I got some wheels uh, for myself here in Alice Springs. I am taking a trip back to New Zealand next month, which I'm really looking forward to, but I, I thought I'd get some wheels sorted so that my transition back to Alice Springs uh, will, be, will be that much easier, that much smoother. I've got my inventory and uh, I've got my sobriety. And guys, just on a serious note, if I didn't have that right now, uh, this would not be possible. Push came to shove, something had to give, and I had to give up the alcohol. I'm trying to do it for 90 days. I did it for 30 days back at the start of the year. That was really, really rewarding. Um, I brought that experience to YouTube on my second channel called It's Okay to Talk, and I'm doing the exact same thing um, with this 90-day uh, challenge. So if uh, any of you guys out there are interested in my sobriety journey, in uh, you know my day-to-day -day life at the moment, I'm pretty much vlogging it every single day over on that channel, and I urge you to go and check it out. It's called It's Okay to Talk. You can find the link down in the um, on my my homepage under the channels at the bottom of the uh, of the page. So that's enough time for talk. It's time to do the walk, or run, or or both. Let's see. Whew. All right, we have arrived. We're in the right spot. But first, I've got to go to the toilet, get that sorted. It's actually a good thing because that means that the water that I've had this morning, the coffee that I've had this morning, has already started to process through my body. Um, and it means that I, I am hydrated enough to begin this, this run. Because it's no, it's no joke. It is no joke. Um, uh, I, under, I severely underestimated this run last time I did it. Uh, I did it in like February. Uh, I think it was about 36 degrees that day, which is, you know, it's not as high as it gets around here, but it's, um, you know, it's beautiful. It's perfect running weather today so the weather is on my side we've got a little bit of cloud at the moment which is not normal around here so that's also on my side um, but I won't, I, I won't say we haven't gone through any adversity yet because we have uh, in fact I didn't realize how fucking cold it was going to be on that bike so I should have I should have had some long sleeves on um, but I didn't want to bring anything extra because there's no room to store anything underneath the bike and I really wanted to just have my my, my backpack on and yeah look uh, I'm rambling now it's 8 56 I want to start this at about 9 o'clock and uh, yeah if we can get on the road by 9 I'll be stoked have a look at this now this is Simpsons Gap this is the uh, the classic photo, the classic view that people capture. But uh, unfortunately, this sand bed, uh, dry river bed, I suppose you could say, is uh, is the start of the actual uh, 25k course. So, one mistake that I made last time was um, not only going the wrong way, but also not finishing it all the way down here by the water. So. Uh, I'm led to believe I need to be pretty much on the water's edge. I'll start my watch and then we come all the way up here until we see an opening on the left hand side. Uh, some, some sort of a trail. 
and we carry on there and then that's pretty much uh, the way that we we go until we reach Alice Springs so oh I'm ready for this man perfect weather honestly can't say that enough fucking perfect weather for a good run and uh, look if I can get it done in anything under three and a half hours with the minimal training that I've been doing I'll be really proud of myself and that will indeed be my qualifying run uh, for next year's Westmax Monster. Pretty epic. Right, so this is effectively the official start line for this 25 and a half kilometer trail half marathon. And uh, there's nothing left to do but to do it. Got some music, got my supplies. I'm gonna start my watch. All right. Let's do this. What have I got myself in for? <laughs> Running along the sand? Jesus Christ. Okay, tell you what, I was lucky to even find the entry to the trail. But this is what I'm working with. I'm a kilometer through. Okay, so very, very early days, but it would be in my best interest to stick to a game plan. And uh, my game plan is to be very disciplined with where I walk and where I run. So it's pretty simple. Walk the uphills, run the downhills, and jog the flat parts. And if I can do that this entire way, I will be on track to qualify. Whew. Whew. Okay. 2.99 kilometers, 24 and a half minutes. Now that is certainly nothing special, uh, but the majority of it has been uphill. So when you think about that, it's actually not too bad. So, couldn't say exactly how high we are, but apparently, and this is out by a bit, so there's 21 k's to go. So, 21 k's might be to the edge of the telegraph station, but it's not, uh, that's not the finish line. So, three k's in, feeling really, really, uh, yeah, just excited, man. Just so happy to be, to be out in nature, doing what I love, exercising, feeling free, free as a bird. The only concern at the moment is my left calf uh, is, you know, it's, I can feel it, put it that way. So I've just got to be mindful of that. And I've also got to be mindful of uh, not doing what I just did. Whoa. And uh, running. You know, even if it is just the slightest in incline, I really need to tell myself to slow down and think about, think about the overall picture, the big picture. Anyway, it looks like we are gonna go down uh, for the next little bit at least. So I'm gonna enjoy this. One thing I do have on my side is music. Now I could be doing this without music, 
and I'd probably feel, yes, yes, okay, to all you woke mofos out there, yes, I would feel more grounded, and it would be a more spiritual experience, but, I mean, I am sailing uncharted waters right now, haven't been on the trail for six months, needed as much motivation as I could possibly muster, and for me at the moment, music, having music, having my favourite songs, when and where I need them to really just give me that boost, uh, that was a non-negotiable. So, either way, just want to send my blessings out to every single one of you guys who have not only clicked on this video, stuck with me over the years, but also have watched long enough to actually get to this part. And if you have, I'm going to do what I've never done before and say, look, if you are at this point, go down to the comment section, hashtag West Max Monster, hashtag West Max Monster, and then I'll know that you're a fucking true OG, an absolute legend of the channel. And with that in mind, we've done three and a half Ks, boom, let's keep going. Okay, all right, so it's been mixed terrain. I'm pretty much down on the flat now. It's been relatively flat for the last like K. I'm just coming up on six Ks, uh, about 40, 44 minutes. Six Ks, 44 minutes, it is what it is. This kind of stuff feels like a real blessing at the moment, but like I mentioned before, I've got to be real careful, like, you know, I'll, I'll head down, you know, somewhat downwards like that, get a, bit of, get a bit of speed up, but then on the other side, inevitably, it's going to go back up. So I've really got to, really got to discipline myself and just walk up as steep, as little as the gradient may seem. Um, that's where I'm at. Now cramp, cramp is a factor, it's definitely a risk factor, I've had cramp before on long runs and the only reason that's really happened is because I've failed to introduce salt back into my system after, uh, after sweating. I'm starting to sweat now, I will say that the cloud cover is a, another blessing. Um, and this is a portion that I should run, so uh, next time I get the camera out I'm going to get my, gator, uh, my, my Powerade out and have a few sips and probably carry that in my hand just for a little bit um, and we'll see how it goes so I'll see you again at about kilometre 9 we'll see where we're at but for now come to think of it that pain in my and my left calf has actually gone away so must have just been a teething issue uh, music helps making these videos help but it's not going to help me get through those final 5k's and I know they're going to be fucking hard so I'll see you at 9 okay we are just coming up on 9k's just ticked over an hour and four minutes uh, you know I vividly remember going the other way about six months ago and I thought holy shit yes you know it's going to be like this the whole way back the whole way to, to Simpsons Gap and unfortunately as we've seen today it's just not the case so I know that I have you know completed quite a bit of elevation already but I do know but I also know that the uh, the highest point the steepest elevation is yet to come it's called Euro Ridge uh, the next stop or the next sort of like little camping area is called Wallaby Gap I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna refill my little 
water bladders because uh, there is drinkable water there which I missed the time before uh, which was a real bad mistake and also speaking of mistakes uh, last time I got a really bad blister a really big blister um, on my foot and I'm getting another one now so that tells me that my shoes aren't ideal I've thought for a long time that I need a specific you know running slash trail running shoe whether that be you know Asics or Hocker or whatever the other brands are but uh, I think after this run definitely after this run the time will have come to, to get a new pair of shoes but as far as my blister is concerned you know the last time I did this run I just finished the only reason I got motivation to do it is because I just finished 30 days of running every day and uh, you can find all of those videos on my other channel it's okay to talk uh, but uh, fatal mistake is getting home and popping it uh, but not only popping it ripping off the skin ripping off the entire blister and just letting it heal without that cover of skin you know what I mean and that fluid and what that meant for me is that I couldn't comfortably run doesn't matter what shoe I was using doesn't matter how many socks I was wearing I could not comfortably run for like three weeks okay because that's how long it took with the friction of wearing shoes and shit that's how long it took to heal maybe even four weeks so I can feel a blister coming on and so aftercare is going to be extremely important because I don't want to be fucking hobbling around for the next four weeks fuck that I've learnt from my mistakes but we do have quite a hefty blister uh, forming at the moment either way I'll see you guys at Wallaby Gap I'll see you guys at Wallaby Gap sounds like a plan all right there we have it Wallaby Gap 150 meters this way oh yeah the legs are the legs are feeling it at the moment but I said to myself I would stop here and uh, get myself sorted for the rest of the trip so that is exactly what I'm gonna do rest the loins rest the legs just a little bit Oh man, oh, only a crazy person would do this shit. All right, so the plan is to fill up these little things because uh, yeah, it might only be like, fuck, I don't know, 25 degrees, but I'm certainly feeling it. And the sun, when it comes out from behind the clouds, uh, it's pretty intense, so I'm gonna fill these up, be back in a sec. Nick minute. Okay. Alright, so we're not quite halfway. Uh, we're about 11 k's through. And this will be the only pit stop I make. We're about to head up to uh, what's called Euro Ridge. And that will be the that'll be the toughest um, climb, so I'm just going to take it easy. I just want to get up there in one piece, and I, I I also want this to be gone by the time I get up there. So I'm going to hold it in my hand. Uh, and sip on it, and I can't see too much. I can't see uh, too much jogging over the next fucking uh, few k's but we'll see you never know cap in the pocket we don't want to contribute to any um any littering all right and that's it one minute oh sorry an hour and 20 an hour and 20 on the dot through uh make of that what you will i'm trying not to look at the time as much as possible but it's kind of hard 
when you do have a time constraint. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and enjoy this as much as possible. That's where we're at, guys. Plenty of good music in the ears and plenty of incredible scenery to keep my mind off things. So let's keep going. Here it is, guys. Euro motherfucking rich. And we're right out the top of it. Talk about brutal. Okay? Talk about I'm gonna try and block the wind. Talk about brutal, guys. That was fucked. But I'm led to believe we are indeed at the top, the top of the ridge, and at the highest point on this track. I've been going, currently I've been going for an hour and 38 minutes, and I've done 12 and a half Ks. So basically halfway through, I hope we've gotten through the worst of it. I couldn't be completely sure, but this is uh, whoa, you don't wanna to get too fucking close. Damn. Have a look at that. All right, guys, so it's time to knuckle down, get down this ridge as fast as possible, and uh, crack on. All the way to Alice Springs. Let's do it. Shit, did I talk too soon? I may have talked a little bit too soon. I've got a habit of doing that. Uh, it seems the brutality is not over yet. Wow. Okay. Three hours and 30 minutes. That is the goal. We're on track, but I said that last time I tried this. All right, guys. If I said I wasn't struggling right now, I'd be lying. This is becoming a real struggle. I'm 16 k's through, two hours and 10 minutes. Oh shit, I've done over 2200 feet of elevation. And climbing this oh fuck I can't stop or else I won't get up all right guys checking in coming up on 19 kilometers coming up on two minutes 30 oh, sorry two hours 37 Basically, oh, fuck. this is some tough shit. Oh. Ah. All right, guys. Oh, man. <clears throat> we are officially in damage control mode. I vividly remember coming under this bridge <clears throat> that I'm under right now. On my first attempt to do this, I was going the other way and I'd, I'd run about five and a half Ks or five Ks. And I think I did it in about 36 minutes. And I thought, fuck yeah, this is going well. Little did I know the trials and tribulations that would, that would face me. Um, I told myself if I ran all the way down towards this, this bridge, that I'd give myself a good couple of minutes just to sit reset put my rubbish in my bag i was so tempted to drop that but i didn't so that's good uh and get out my final bladder of water uh that's all i've got severely under hydrated severely under uh sodiumated if that's a word severely under carbed i thought that i got a liter of of powerade two liters unfortunately i grabbed the 600 mil i don't know what was going in my head it looked bigger but that only gives me like 36 grams of carbs per bottle. So that's like 72 grams of carbs this entire way, which is way too little. Uh, as far as straight water, this will, if I drink this, this will be a total of two liters of water, which is far too little once again. 
But, uh, you know, it's a learning experience. And um, I'm also battling through some pretty fucking hefty cramp right now too. So I just want to get back in one piece, whether I have to walk or run or a mixture of the two. Time will tell. I've been here for a couple of minutes. 20 k's in, 2 minutes 48. Uh, sorry, two, 20 k's in, 2 hours 48. Okay? Including this rest. So I, I believe right to the finish line, we had to start right at the start line, we have to finish at the finish line. I believe it's 5.5 k's. So effectively I've got to get in in a time under 3.5 three, three hours. I've got uh, 40, 41 minutes right now. So I think I'll do, I think I'll do really well to get it done. Um, I think it's an achievable goal, but like I just said, uh, I am battling through some fucking pretty bad cramps, man. My quad, I uh, thought it would be my calves, but it's my quad. And then I went to go and uh, stretch it and instantly my hamstring fucking cramped up, locked up. I was like, fuck. So it's both the quad and the hamstring on my left leg. For anyone wondering either way five and a half k's guys uh i've actually i turned off my music the last few k's because i just had to concentrate it was just getting a little bit too intense but uh yeah the clock's on the clock is indeed on right now so let's do this 40 minutes to get five five point three k's done all right my mind is telling me no but my body my body's telling me yes. Probably shouldn't do that. I might faint like the other guy. Fucking hell. This is a test of character, I'll tell you that much. We're almost there. My hamstrings have locked up multiple times. It's 3 hours 26 minutes and 16 seconds. And I've officially done... 24.72 k's the finish line is in sight if I can bro if I can do this I'll be so proud of myself this is this is super super hard I've got two minutes to go Apparently I've got to get across a lawn and touch a lamp, touch a uh, fence post. <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> Literally got a minute and 10 seconds to go. I am fucking dying. And if the carrot wasn't dangling so close, I would have given up. But there it is. Fuck. Fuck. That's the track. Let's go. 45 seconds. Holy fuck. I gotta. I'm gonna make it onto a bike track. I feel like it's just here. About 30 seconds. Three. Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Ah. Uh, uh. I feel like it was back there. Uh, uh, oh, I'm dying. Oh fuck. I feel like it was back there. They said something brown. Nah. I'm done guys. If, I don't think it is that. But if it is, if it is that thing behind me, I finished in just under three hours, 30 minutes. It's either that or somewhere down there, somewhere down there. I don't care anymore. I just finished. Oh, let's save it. 
25.36 kilometers along the Larapinta Trail in three hours, 30 minutes and 15 seconds. I pushed myself further than I ever thought I could. Absolutely incredible feeling. Holy shit. Hey, worth a YouTube video, nonetheless. I'm just waiting for my ride. I'll have to wait until about 4.30 to go and get my motorbike, but that's okay. It's pretty, tr it's pretty, I mean, oh, I say it's a trustworthy place, but depends on where you are, where you are, I suppose. Out at Simpsons Gap, I can't imagine, with all the tourists that go through there, I can't imagine anyone stealing my helmet. That's all I'm worried about. Not worried about the bike. That's all locked up. It's just my helmet. And we've still got, honestly, man, I fucking, Jesus Christ, I pushed myself so hard. So much further than I, than I thought I could. You know, three hours and 30 minutes. We, we cleared the qualifying time by half an hour. And we've still got the most fun part left. For someone who loves stats, loves analytics, you know, it's, it's one thing looking at stats and analytics and wowing over them with uh, professional athletes. But as far as your own statistics, your own athletic statistics, nothing beats it. So I'm gonna have a quick look now on my phone, but uh, as far as running through them and looking at splits and trying to think back certain times during that 25Ks, I'll do it when I get home. I pushed through literally probably six or seven Ks worth of cramps. That is not safe, but there was only one way I was gonna get back and that's you know, by myself. I, I was never going I wasn't gonna be able to get chop it out, although, you know, if I had it broken my leg, maybe. Um, actually, no, a couple of rangers would have come along the trail and carried me out through stretcher, which would have been really interesting. Looks like we've got a, a little mate here. Hey, you're friendly, aren't you? Oh no, move too quickly. Either way, guys, oh my God, Jesus. Oh, I am done. Oh, wowee. All right, guys, I didn't actually know I had that in me. I did not know. I mean, I did. I had little inklings that I could uh, pull something out of my ass like that. But uh, when you're in the thick of it, when you're 20Ks through of a 25.3K run and you're feeling like your, your legs, well, like I said during the video, my mind was telling me no, but my body, my body, my body was telling me yes. Thank God. So, all right, you know, what an experience. Um, very uh, grounding, you know what I mean? Um, very random, I'm not gonna lie. I, I have been getting into, getting back into a bit of training. Um, certainly not, you know, anything like that. Certainly no half marathons. In fact, I feel like uh, the last, the last time I did a half marathon was six months ago on the exact same track, just going the other way. Prior to that, fuck, who knows? Um, I've only run five kilometers at any one time over the last six months. And uh, you know, I'm not happy about that. I feel like I can definitely push myself further. And, but you know, when you're in those runs, at certain times, when it gets to four and a half, five Ks, you honestly think, like depending on how hard you've gone, I, you know, I sometimes think, look, look I, I can't push myself any further. But, doing, but going out and doing something like I did today, you know, embeds, a new sense of confidence around my physical capability and you know when it comes to going out for my next jog when it comes to 5k's through I'm gonna think back I mean it's gonna be inevitable I'll think back to this run and think uh, come on mate get real you can keep going so we've got some stats we have some interesting stats what I used to actually measure the run was my Garmin um, smartwatch. I'm not exactly sure what the the name is, but actually no, I can tell you. I can tell you through the Garmin app. It is called an Instinct. Garmin Instinct. That's what I can see here. 
Now, interesting stats. All right, three hours, 30 minutes, and 15 seconds. 25.36 total kilometers. 2,380 total calories burnt. And uh, we did a casual, you know, 861 meters of elevation. 861 meters. Now that in feet is, oh, near on like 3,000 feet. You know, probably 2,800 feet or something like that. Um, we've actually got, uh, in Strava, we actually have like a graphic showing where the elevation was and how steep it was. And uh, yeah, there's certain parts on that graphic that really, you know, show just, just, um, yeah, just how steep overall uh, certain areas, certain parts of it were. And there's, I mean, I'll throw the elevation graphic up on the screen. Uh, you know, we started off with a fair bit of elevation, came down, uh, came down the other side, and then I had probably five or six Ks from about four and a half Ks all the way through to about 11 Ks where it was relatively flat. And being that it was the first half of the, the race, I was feeling good, feeling pretty confident. I didn't push it too hard, but I was able to maintain a pace of around about six minutes to six minutes 30 throughout that five and a half kilometer stretch. And you know, thinking back, the fact that I was able to just finish in three hours, 30 minutes, you know, in times like that where I was feeling good and I, I did run uh, for the most part and I didn't stop, you know, it's those little moments that really contribute to the result at the end, right? So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud about doing that. I said that along the way. I said, if I can get anything near three, three hours and 30 minutes, I'll be extremely proud, and I am. I am proud. We had an average heart rate of 153 beats per minute. What I found is that on the, the declines, that would give my body and my heart rate uh, some relief and, you know, even whilst jogging, if it was downhill, my heart rate would come down from something like 160, 165 beats per minute, slowly but surely come down to something like 140. Um, it f and I felt it. I felt it. You know, if I did have a 500 meter decline or whatever, I'd jog the whole entire way um, and then I'd get to the bottom and I'd be like, shit, I'm actually feeling, I'm feeling a little recovered and I'd look at my heart rate and I, it, it would have dropped, you know, 20 beats per minute. So um, heart rate is another really interesting measurable, something I am really interested in, um, especially resting heart rate. Uh, I'm all about trying to get my resting heart rate as low as possible and as consistent as possible. And the only way that you're going to get your resting heart rate lower than what it is now is to do cardio or do exercise that forces it to get higher um, regularly. So the higher it goes during cardio, the lower it's going to be during rest because your heart is a muscle and it gets fitter. It gets more capable. Okay, let's look at the splits. So we started off with a fair bit of elevation. We started off in the sand, actually. Jeepers creepers. I didn't know how that would go. Got through, you know, that, that first bit of elevation at around about eight minutes per K. Got down to the bottom of that, and it was kilometers five, six, seven, eight, and nine that were around about six minutes 20 per K. And looking back, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I can't really remember how I was feeling at that point, um, but obviously it was, it was pretty pretty easy going, really, compared to like what I had to go through at the end. Then we had our second piece of, of really serious elevation, and uh, during those two kilometers, trying to get up to the top, the first K was at 11 minutes 54, the second was at 10 minutes 13, um, and that took us to the top of Euro Ridge at kilometer 12 and a half or 13. Heading down the other side of Euro Ridge, uh, it was, yeah, it was overall, uh, downhill, but there were certainly some uphills as well. 8.33, 8.10, 8.58. And then at around about K17 through 18.19, I really started feeling it. I started thinking, holy shit. I, start, I kept on looking at the clock as much as I didn't want to, and I was sort of trying to do the, you know, the figures in my head and work out exactly how you know, I was going to have to get to this K by this time to really give myself a chance to get under three, uh, three hours and 30 minutes. And... Yeah, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. 8.58, 10.06, 9.16, 9.16. And then there must have been, a, well, there was. There was negative 46 uh, meters worth of elevation. 
and uh, during that kilometre it was you know it would have been for the most part downhill and it came down to 7 minutes 19 so that you know I sped it up a wee bit gave me an opportunity to, to recover somewhat and then uh, and then it was 8.03, 8.05, 7.30, 8.23 and the pretty much what felt like a sprint to the finish the 25th kilometre was 6 minutes 50 and then for the final 300 metres I was just doing all I could to get to this mystery marker that I, I don't even know if I reached it or not but either way the final 300 meters was done at a 5 minute 44 pace so uh, I will have put all those graphics up on the screen for you guys to see uh, it's uh, yeah and that is indeed my qualification for next year's 2024 West Max Monster Ultra Marathon, which is going to be made up of that section of the Larapinta Trail that I just did, but also a 40 kilometer section prior to that. So you start from a place called Stanley Chasm, it's a 65 kilometer ultra marathon, and you could only qualify for it if you've done a previous ultra marathon the last 12 months or something, or for local Alice Springs residents, do exactly what I just did log through Strava your uh, 25 kilometer Simpsons Gap to Alice Springs run and it's got to be under four hours so the last thing I'll leave you with is an interesting well this is the competitor in me coming out I actually found this year's results for that particular section so the ultra marathon is it's got various lengths from 5Ks all the way up to 231Ks, which is the actual West Max Monster. So it goes 231 down to 128, then there's 65, 25, and 5Ks. So the 25 kilometer section that I just did is actually its own race on race day. But I want to do something more than that. Either way, what I was able to find is some uh, results from the 25K race that was run just a short two months ago. So let's have a look. I mean, you know, obviously it doesn't, doesn't really mean much, but uh, with a bit of training, I feel like I could probably get it down to 3 hours 20. I, I assume. I mean, maybe even 3 hours 15, but we'll take 3 hours 30 minutes and 15 seconds as today's finishing time. And if we look at last year's results, the winner, Petra Millis Walsh, did it in 2 hours 33 minutes 37 seconds. Which is absolutely flying. That is ridiculous. That's pretty. That's 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 running the entire way. Okay, that's fucked. Either way, um, for example, tenth place came in at two hours fifty-one minutes and forty-seven seconds. Twentieth place came in at three hours three minutes and two seconds. Thirtieth place three hours eleven minutes and twenty-seven seconds. Fortieth place three hours twenty-one minutes and twenty-seven seconds. And 50th place, 3 hours 33 and 46 seconds. So I must have come, well I would have come, between 46th and 47th position. 3 hours 30 minutes and 12 seconds for 46. 3 hours 30 minutes and 25 seconds for 47. So I'm going to say that if... I mean I probably would have been a bit more motivated on the day. And there's aid stations as well, right? You can, you know, get food and... And drink and what have you so I would have been 47th out of a total of 169 so that's not bad man that's not bad for fucking no training all right no tra I'm gonna pat myself on the back here no training uh, living like a fucking alcoholic eating like shit and uh, you know being pretty much overall really quite depressed recently for me to go out there and fucking do that and prove to myself that I, you know, I've got a base level of fitness. You know, it's 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 really really rewarding, and I'm sitting here feeling really accomplished. But I'm not going to rest on my laurels. Um, I'm going to, you know, hopefully try and continue to to exercise and uh, and and do more long distance running because that is I actually really enjoy it. I do in the good times, the cruisy times. I really enjoy it. Like I said, it feel grounded. It's very spiritual. Um, Music was amazing for the first like 20 Ks and then I got real sick of it. I got real sick of it. I had to take my music out because all I wanted to do was get to the end. So it's funny. It's a funny old thing, long distance running, but um, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
and that is indeed my qualification for next year's race. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for tuning in, if you're still here, you're a fucking legend. And uh, look, I'm going to present this to you, I'm going to present this idea to you guys. Why don't you have a look on Google Maps and have a look, you know, what, 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 trail, what trails there are around where you live, you know, whether you're by a, I mean, I'm in a, de I'm in a desert, guys. I'm in a fucking desert and I can still find one. So, you know, there's trails and mountains and lakes and waterfront tracks and, you know, everywhere in the world. So I recommend that you guys do something similar because it's really, really raised my, uh, my self-esteem, you know what I mean? And can't go wrong with that. Either way, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you for some... NFL Top 100 Players of 2023 Reactions. Sounds good to me.